Hands up. right here because we got a pup and that's you <laughs> so this is Lucas Lucas is a nine ten week old great Pyrenees he is a solid 20 pounds of just pure ow ow teeth at the moment so great Pyrenees grow to be massive they are really big dogs and i love big fluffy dogs and as you can see his paws are massive show me your paws boy show them. oh sorry lipstick so i threw up a q and a over on my instagram see if you guys have any questions about lucas puppy training and all that good stuff so i'm gonna go ahead and answer some of your questions while lucas eats my hand off okay question number one have you ever trained a puppy before? No, no, I have not. Um, my parents have had, I mean, I've had puppies growing up, but I never really trained them or even really how we realized what was going on. Hey, hey, buckaroo. So this is me and my boyfriend's first time ever training a pup together, and it's been an adventure. We've only had this guy for two weeks. So no, have not trained a puppy before. Okay, next question. What prompted you to get him? So me and my boyfriend have been wanting to get a puppy for a long time, but we were in an apartment, and since I love big dogs, we, knew we couldn't really get a big dog in an apartment. That'd just be straight mean. And like I said, we've talked about different kinds of dog breeds, but a Great Pyrenees is the only one that we really agree on. And with that, we need land. So we finally were renting this house. If you haven't seen my house tour, I will put the card up here. And we finally have a really decent yard, like two big sides of grass, pool so and just lots of space inside because he is going to be primarily an indoor dog but with outside room to roam so once we got this house we knew come summertime once i had summer off we wanted to finally jump in and get this pup so that is what we did so great pyrenees are typically found on ranches they are great ranch dogs really great guardians um my boyfriend was actually raised on a ranch and they have great pyrenees that's kind of how we know about Great Pyrenees. And I love his up at the ranch, so it was the one dog that we both agreed on. So that's why we got a Great Pyrenees. Next question. How did you decide on his name? So we decided on Lucas because Lucas in Czech means bright, and my boyfriend is Czech, so we thought a Czech name would be fun. And like I said, Lucas means bright, and Lucas here has some really bright, pretty eyes, and he's gonna be a very bright boy. So, Lucas seemed like a good fit. Yeah? Yeah? Oh. <gasps> okay. Puppy food. We have to get large breed puppy food because since he is such a big dog, they can grow too fast and that'll be really painful for their joints and stuff like that down the road. So we are feeding him a blue buffalo, large breed puppy uh, lifespan, something like that. I'll post a picture and I'll link it down below. So if you are interested in getting that. Next question, where did you get him? Did you get him from a breeder and how much was he? So we actually found Lucas on Craigslist. We drove up near Porterville to get him, which is an hour and a half from where I am. He was 400 bucks, and we just got him from a couple of ranchers who their Great Pyrenees had puppies, and they were trying to sell him. So that's what we got. He already had his first set of shots, so that was a really big plus for us. Did you want a male or female? So we originally wanted to get two female Great Pyrenees because we just thought, oh, that way they can have a friend, they have each other, and two girls will probably be tame. False, big false. Females, I guess, are the alpha in this breed. So actually, a lot of people on Reddit said they will not even sell you two female Great Pyrenees because it's just way too much trouble. They're good when they're puppies, but then about that four to six month range, everything changes. And with the females being the alpha, 
deal with that. I felt like it would just be too much trouble if I'm the one primarily home with them and it's another female and they think they're the alpha. I'd probably made a note. So we decided to go with a male. Next question. Is Lucas a chewer? So he likes to nibble, I would say. He likes to feel things in his mouth, but it's not necessarily a chewer. Like we've had shoes laying around here and he hasn't even like broken in. Them. He just kind of likes to chew on the rubber or like the shoelaces. I think he likes the way they feel rather than trying to rip things apart. However, he will rip apart napkins, um, cardboard, whatever, but that's kind of as predicted. So kind of good that he's not ripping apart shoes and whatnot, but I'm curious to if once his bigger teeth come in, if that will be a phase later down the road and we'll really regret our decision of letting our shoes kind of lay around. But we'll see if we make it. Next question, has he had any of his vaccines yet? So Lucas has had his first set of vaccines. That was actually, he already had that done when he was a puppy with the old owners. So I'm waiting till tomorrow, actually July 1st, to get his second round of shots. So he'll have a second round of Parvo and all the other stuff that they do. Parvo is really bad in the area that I'm at. So we are not letting him outside at all, not even in the backyard until he has all three of his Parvo vaccines. And especially because we do kind of live out like by an orchard and there's other dogs and stuff that go around. So I don't know what's happening this fence and I don't know how the whole thing works, but Parvo is just so deadly to pups that it's not worth it at all. And we have a pretty big house luckily, so we're just, we're keeping him indoors. Next, does he shed a lot? At the moment, he's actually not shedding too much, but once he gets his adult fur, He's gonna be shedding like crazy. Like we're gonna need the little Roomba to go and pick up all his fur. Uh, very similar to like Huskies, how they shed. Like we should be brushing him once a day, which I am starting to do now because I really want him to be used to the brush by the time he gets older where we have to brush him every day. But he does have very thick fur. That's kind of what makes him different from like an English crane. My parents used to have an English crane golden retriever. Oh, okay, play with that. Next question. Ah ha ha. <laughs> hey, chill out. Chill out. Thank you. When are you inviting us over to play with the puppy girl? Real soon, once he gets all of his shots. So do you have any training plans for this sweet little guy? Training plans, we're gonna try and take it easy and just see what we can do on our own. Great Canadians are very stubborn, so we might have to go to some sort of like official training when he gets a little little older all the shots and stuff like that but for now i think we're gonna try and just keep it just us so training basic commands and i also heard on like the great pyrenees like reddit form to have like an emergency word so the example that one person gave was pronto and teaching them that when you say this word it means drop everything and come over so while you're training them with like sit lay down stay those simple commands you're giving these little treats but for the big emergency word, you're given like strips of bacon. Like they, they know that if they drop everything and come to you, they're getting a great reward. And this is very useful for an emergency situation, say that they get off leash. Because they are super protective, those ranch dogs, they can just take off and run. Or if they catch a scent, man, they are gone. So teaching them that emergency word can be a really big help or a difference between a life and death situation. So I think we're gonna try and do that as well. I don't know what the emergency room will be yet, but yeah, for now, we're working on training on our own. You are crazy. Okay, does he have a favorite toy yet? Primarily with household objects or body parts. You love hands and feet. You love hands and feet. Despite all the toys that we got him. Moose, duck, snuggle pup. But other than that, I would say that he likes duck here. There's also, in his crate at night, I also put these two. So this is Moose, this was his first toy. And I got Moose because it has lots of different textures and I didn't know what he would like. So it has the fur, but also has like the rough. And of course, the squeaks. Then the ahow. Then there is the snuggly pup. And snuggly pup looks just like him. It's supposed to help them with, okay, stop. Thank you, getting way too much. Don't you even 
think about going for my toes. Hey, hey, chill out. Okay, so Snuggle Pup was recommended to me by the trendy teacher. You might know her over on Instagram or TikTok. She recommended this to me because she just got a puppy too, and she said this made a world of a difference for crate training. It comes with a little mini heart that you put inside that has an actual heartbeat, so that way they feel like they are next to their little brothers, sisters that they just recently had to leave, and they don't feel so alone. So that came a little late. He's been doing wonderful with crate training, so we didn't necessarily need him. But I really like him for situations whenever I'm trying to leave because this little guy has pretty big separation anxiety, especially because he had to go to the vet and stay overnight for three days. And that definitely hurt the crate chain a little bit. Can you come back in here? Sorry, I know I just told you to go away, but I want to like end the video. Okay, cool. Um, but before we got Snuggle Pup, he really liked this little guy. This was one that actually, ah, hey. This was a stuffed animal that one of my students actually gave me. And I think he likes it because it's similar size, I guess. So small, but similar to size. So those are kind of his faves. Um, another one that I recently got, oh, I can't find it. Um, it's like a rubber ball that you put treats in. So he likes that and that keeps him pretty occupied. Um, but for the most part, he really just likes hands and feet. So now we'll go back into crate training. Crate training this guy has been pretty good for the most part. First couple nights, he just slept great. I had to, he would whimper like once every like two hours, but once I kind of put my hand down, or just say like, you're okay. Then he would like roll over and go back to sleep. And in his crate, I always kept this guy and moose. That way if he wanted to play and bite stuff, he had this thing to go to, or this one to snuggle up to. And I feel like that was pretty good. Um, now I keep the snuggle pup in there and whenever I leave to go to like the gym or something during the day I will turn the heartbeat on that way he has some like comfort in that and I will also put one of my t-shirts or something in there So hopefully he has that reassurance that I'm coming back um, But like I did mention he did have to go to the vet for like three days overnight because someone found a grape under the couch. I don't even know how old that grape was because we haven't had grapes in the house. So he found a grape. And I didn't know if there was one grape or two grapes. I mean, definitely wasn't a whole handful of grapes, but I knew it was one to three. So I freaked out because if you don't know, grapes are super toxic to dogs and they don't even necessarily know why. Um, some dogs have terrible reactions, some are okay. And they don't know if it's like the pesticides, the skin, the actual inside of the grape. They don't know very much about it. So I freaked out and took him. They got him immediately in and they induced vomiting and they did some stuff to make him go to sleep so he wasn't being tortured. And, but as protocol, they had to keep him overnight for three days. It was brutal because he had just been with us for like a week and I felt like a terrible dog mom. Of like I literally had you for four days and you're already in the emergency bed. Hey, 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 make a smart choice there. Make a smart choice, bite your own foot, thank you. But because he had to be, I'm pretty sure, in a crate all three days while he was at the vet, it's made crate training here a little more challenging. He's definitely more like freaked out. Um, also, car rides are now difficult when car rides used to be no problem at all. Now he gets all nervous and he like wants to be on me because now he thinks he's going to the vet understandable. So now I'm trying to take him to like go visit dad at the gym, to go to Starbucks. Today we went to Starbucks and he had his first cappuccino. So I'm trying to get him to realize again that car rides aren't bad and not be so anxious, which I think is working pretty well. Crate training, he's getting back to the norm too. Just gonna take a little time, but now he freaks out even more whenever I leave. And that makes it really hard, I feel like. At first, whenever I left, I would try to keep him out here because I wanted him to have more space and that didn't work. He started doing some barks that I've never even heard before, sounding like a chicken. So then I decided I have nothing to lose. I'll try putting him in his crate and I think that was just way more calming. He, I would come home and he was sleeping instead of freaking out and howling. So I think that's a good sign. So I'm going to keep putting him in his crate. Um, as far as when it comes to me going back to school and teaching again for like seven, eight hours, I don't know what to do. I would love to get him to not freak out and be able to like have this living room space, but I don't know if it'll end up going that way. So we shall see. Next question. How is potty training going? 
Uh, okay, so potty training has been a little bit of an adventure. I have those reusable grass pee pads because I know that he would play with just the normal blue ones and the grass ones I want him to be used to. Uh, I think it'll be easy transition to once we can take him outside to go potty. So we've been using those for the most part. Um, pretty good. He always goes number two on the grass besides the rare occasion when I think he's like more just rebelling against us. So it's interesting. I can tell how the potty train is going to go first thing in the morning because first thing in the morning if he gets it right on there he's good the rest of the day. If he decides to be stubborn and go somewhere else then it's like okay this is going to be rough. But I would say that he's actually getting used to it pretty well, especially for, again, being here for four days, going to the vet for three days, and being back. So, for the most part, he's doing pretty good. Pup life, the most frustrating times of the day are first thing in the morning and right before bed. He is like a child. First thing in the morning, all he wants is to eat my hands and feet. And occasionally will attack my hair. So that is zero fun. Um, and then once I feed him, he'll kind of calm down a little bit, but he still is just riled up and wants to play. No toy will suffice, and it's just brutal. So sometimes I have to like play dead, pretend like I'm sleeping, and then he'll leave me alone for a little bit. Occasionally he'll come like pounce on me, or he'll sit like in a random corner and just stare at me and be quiet so that I automatically peek up to see what he's getting into. And then he makes eye contact and he charges me. So it's pretty funny, but also pretty scary because I know he's going to bite the heck out of my hands. But I do have to remember that I just have to put up with his biting and him being a major puppy for about 15, 20 minutes, and then he'll nap for about an hour. So it's like an hour of sleep, 15, 20 minutes of torture, an hour of sleep, 15 minutes of torture, because you're adorable. And this is why they make you adorable, because otherwise, you're just a big old pain in the butt. Okay, well it's about nap time, so I think he's done with my talking. <laughs> we need to go take a nap. So if you like this video, please give me a big thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you have any questions, and maybe I'll make a part two to this video or an update or something like that as he gets a little older. Yeah. Alright, well, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys. <sighs>